Hi, this video will show four strategies that we have learned in fifth grade when you need to add or subtract fractions. First, the money strategy. That's when denominators are factors of 100. Secondly, the clock strategy, when denominators are factors of 12 or 60. The ratio table is the third strategy, when one denominator is a factor of the other. And finally, the formula. But use the formula with caution. That's for when one denominator is not a factor of the other. First, let's look at the money strategy. When denominators are factors of 100, 3 fourths plus 1 twentieth. Here are models to show 3 fourths shaded in 1 twentieth. The children have learned that 3 fourths is 75 hundredths, 1 twentieth is 5 hundredths, so our total is 80 hundredths. That can be simplified, but it's fine to leave it at 80 hundredths. Here's the money model with the second example, 2 fifths minus 3 fiftieths. The students have learned to take the hundred square, divide it into five equal pieces, using two of them for 40 hundredths. The 3 fiftieths would be the same as 6 hundredths. 40 hundredths minus 6 hundredths, 34 hundredths. One simple thing we've shown the children for simplifying, when both numbers are even, is to simply halve them. So half of 34 is 17, half of 150. A simpler version would be 17 fiftieths. Either of these solutions would be fine. So there's the money strategy. Clocks, when denominators are factors of 12 or 60. We started the children with the numbers on the clock and learning how to divide them into equal parts. So they've learned that 2 thirds, and they think of it in their head, is the same as 8 twelfths. The 5 is still 5 twelfths, so 8 twelfths plus 5 twelfths equals 13 twelfths. They can leave it as 13 twelfths or put it to 1 and 1 twelfth. Secondly, when you're thinking of 60ths, think of minutes on a clock. 5 twelfths would be 25 minutes out of 60 plus 7 60ths. That would be 32 60ths. Another strategy is the ratio table. This is what we want them to do with one denominator is a factor of the other. So 3 sixteenths plus 1 fourth. The 1 fourth needs to be put to the same denominator and 4 is a factor of 16. So here's what a child's ratio table might look like. They start with 1 fourth. Multiply by 2 and get 2 eighths. Then multiply numerator and denominator by 3 for 3 twelfths. Then multiply the numerator by 4, the denominator by 4. An equivalent fraction would be 4 sixteenths. So this one becomes 3 sixteenths plus 4 sixteenths equals 7 sixteenths. Another example, if they didn't like the clock for the twelfths and the sixtieths, and they understand that 12 is a factor of 60, would be to change the 5 twelfths. If they're aware that 12 times 5 would give us 60, then they know that they have to do 5 times 5 would be 25 for 25 sixtieths. So 5 twelfths, no, that would be incorrect. It would be the substitution, the equivalent fraction would be 25 sixtieths plus 7 sixtieths. Now we have the same denominator for 32 sixtieths. Our final strategy is the formula. We develop this formula by using double number lines. This is used when one denominator is not a factor of the other. So for 5 twelfths plus 7 sixtieths, you would not want to use this strategy. 
First of all, because when you multiply the denominators, you're going to get a very large number. So we don't want children doing that. That is not a good equation to use this strategy. For thirds and fourths, children could use the clock. Or they could see that 3 times 4 is 12. The equivalent fraction for 2 thirds is right here. 2 times 4, 8 twelfths. Minus 1 times 3 for 3 twelfths. Can we stop that? Okay, so that gives us 8 twelfths minus 3 twelfths for 5 twelfths. Finally, the formula really does work well when you have denominators that are not factors of each other, like a 7 and a 6. 7 times 6 is 42. The strategy says numerator 1 times denominator 2 for 18. 18 40 seconds is equal to 3 sevenths. Then denominator 2 times numerator 1 for 7. 1 sixth has an equivalent fraction of 7 40 seconds. When you add those together, you would get 25 40 seconds. So those are the four strategies we want our fifth graders to use. And again, save the formula for only those when one denominator is not a factor of the other.